productivity has been greatly enhanced by the inclusion of new features, such as the enhanced custom grid, a custom column tool, new placement options for doors and windows, and of course constraints that can be applied to AEC objects. The Enhanced Custom Grid dialog offers a customizable list of sizes. It's easy to assign a sequence of sizes for any of the four sides of the grid. Each side can be managed separately, allowing you to quickly create a custom layout. The number of grid lines and their spacing is completely up to you, and the preview makes the chosen settings quite clear. You also select which sides of the grid will display grid bubbles, keeping in mind that grid bubbles can be selected in the dialog or added later from the Grid Context tab. You can also have secondary grid lines numbered as you like. They can be created with the dialog or after the grid is placed. In this example, the Offset Grid Line tool is used to create a new secondary grid line from the existing grid object. Notice that the secondary grid is numbered automatically based on the numbering convention typically used in practice. The entire grid or individual grid base can be dimensioned quickly. This example shows how the entire grid is dimensioned by simply selecting the grid and the dimension grid tool, entering an offset value, and it's done. Even though this was done with one click, Take note that the Context tab offers many choices for customizing the grid. Using the new Custom Column tool, you can easily create a column based on user-defined line work. This can be closed polylines, circles, rectangles, and even splines or ellipses. The new column shape is given a name, insertion point, and is added as a column style to the Style Manager. Now it can be placed using familiar insertion and rotation options. The Properties palette now has placement options for rapid placement of multiple doors and windows. Without the need for object snaps, they can be offset from wall corners or other doors and windows. They can be placed relative to grid lines and you decide if the spacing is equal along a wall or equal between grid lines. In this example, the preview shows the door offset from the internal corner. The property settings can now be changed or you can simply pick to place the door. Now, with the settings unchanged, the next preview door shows as being offset from the previously placed door opening. This is controlled by the automatic offset on the Properties palette. Using Add Selected to start the door placement allows you to access and change placement properties. For this example, the Relative to Grid option on the Properties palette is turned on. As you might have expected, the door preview is now offset from the grid and not the internal corner of the wall. When placing a door or window, you can easily position them centered on the wall or centered between grid lines. This setting is available from the Properties palette and is easily set by changing the position to center and by properly turning on or off the Relative to Grid option. Now, with a single click, the door is centered perfectly. You can also place multiple doors or windows using the Multiple Insert option. This setting is controlled from the Properties palette while in the Add Door or Window mode. Just set it to Yes and make sure Relative to Grid is appropriate. First, select the wall segment that will hold the doors or windows. Next, set the appropriate number of objects, or you can control the spacing for each object. And finally, you can pick to place them. Thankfully, the preview lets you anticipate the end result and make all necessary changes prior to the final placement. 
This is obviously much better than having to delete and recreate until you get it right. Constraints can be used as a drafting aid, for example to move and align objects quickly. They can also be used to establish desirable geometric relationships between objects, so that if an object moves, the other object follows. With the wall selected, the Context tab now has parametric options available. In this example, a constraint is used to correct the wall placement, adjusting it to a horizontal alignment. Using constraints, you can align and reposition geometry. In this example, one wall is easily aligned with the grid, and another is aligned to the edge of a column. Keeping in mind, of course, these are just a couple quick examples of the powerful relationships created by parametric constraints. Constraints use system resources, so if the objects are correctly placed and no change is anticipated, then the constraints can and should be removed. Unnecessary parametric constraints would simply increase drawing size and display time. Where you want to maintain a relationship, such as keeping walls collinear with grid lines, then you leave the constraint. If the grid line moves, then the centered wall will move with it. When using constraints, the tab key is essential as a toggle between the faces and the center of the wall. This helps you precisely choose the location that is being constrained. Take note of the awesome relationship that now exists between the grid, the columns, and the wall. This can be a real time saver when manipulating objects.